Hello friends, let's crack UPSC Civil Service Examination in English with Unacademy, India's largest online learning platform. I am Mohan Krishnamurti, I am a geophysicist, author and a teacher. I will be teaching Geography and Environment in Unacademy, friends. I am presently working as Associate Professor of Geography at Bangalore University. I have teaching experience of 12 years and a research experience of 15 years. I have traveled and worked in many countries on geophysical phenomena like earthquake, volcanoes, tides, ocean currents, etc. I have authored two books, Just Products Volume 1 on Physical Geography and Just Products Volume 2 on Indian Geography, friends. I am presently working as an environmentalist wherein I am trying to publish book using recycled paper and I am part of various afforestation and waste management programs. I am advisor to disaster response force of various countries, friends. I am joining an academy because it helps me to expand my outreach to students around the world. I have a unique teaching skills through which I can make you love the subject at the same time help you clear the examination. Students, will get a lot of benefit for joining an academy. You will be getting daily live classes. You get structured courses. You will get live tests, quizzes and dedicated doubt clearing session. Unlimited access to all the videos where you can download and watch them anytime, anywhere. You will get to learn from top teachers like me friends. You can see their number, names and experiences mentioned here. All the topics in the mains and prelims are taught here in an academy friends. If you subscribe, You'll be getting all the classes, prelims, mains and interview in detail. There will be too many courses and you can learn from any courses you want. Coming to a very important slide friends, all of you know that UPSC requires dedicated strategy and long term preparation. So please go for 24 months subscription and if you use this code MKUS, you'll get a discount of 10%. Subscriptions are very important friends where that you can prepare and learn consistently because UPSC preparation requires consistent preparation. So this subscription will guide you in the right way to learn and crack this examination trends. If you're preparing for 2021, go for 12 months. If you're preparing for 2022, go for 22, 24 months trends. 24 months is two years. So for two years, the fees is 57600 after using the code. So it is very affordable when it compares to offline medium friends. So please stay home and stay safe and learn with an academy of friends. We are starting something called iconic subscription wherein every student will be given a mentor where the mentor will be guiding the student every day giving him test series, main sculptions and all will be done by the mentor. So this is a very important uh, friends wherein every day you will be made to write the answers. Your writing skills, your essay writing skills will improve and chances will be very high that you will clear in first attempt. So as a result Please make sure that you don't iconic friends. We can see the plus and iconic both have a lot of benefits, but personal coach will be available in iconic. Daily mains and question answers will be there in iconic. Study planner and personalized feedback will be there in the iconic friends. For 24 months, the fees is 9900. After using this code MKUS, you'll get a discount of 10% and the fees will be 8900 friends. So please go for iconic subscription for two years. So it will help you to crack the examination in your very first attempt. So let's crack it friends with an academy and today's class will be on tides. So all of us know tides are one of the most important oceanic phenomena and tides are vertical movement in the ocean water. So it involves rise and fall of water level. We can notice this rise and fall of water level due to gravitational attraction of sun, gravitational pull of moon and centrifugal force of earth. So please remember friends, there is a vertical movement here. Whereas waves and ocean currents are horizontal movement. So tides are vertical movement. So please remember, whenever the water level rises up, it is called as high tide, high tide. Whenever the water level comes down, it is called as low tide. So please notice this. Again, when the water level rises up, it is called as flood tide. We use the word flood tide. When the water level comes down, it is called as ebb, ebb tide or ebb current. Please remember friends, this rise and fall of water is called as tides. So please remember friends, tides occur everywhere on all water bodies, lakes, rivers, oceans, seas, backwaters of the dam, etc. But in lakes, rivers, what happens? The volume of water is less. As a result, the, the vertical movement is hardly noticed. Whereas in oceans, we have large volume of water. As a result, any vertical movement in the water can be easily noticed. So please remember friends, in lakes, rivers and backwaters also we have tides, but the tidal range is very less. Whereas in the ocean, the tidal range, the extent between high tide and low tide, low tide can be easily 
noticed. So please remember, friend, the vertical extent, vertical extent between high tide and low tide is called as tidal range. Tidal range. Please remember this. Tidal range. Tidal range. Please remember this. Tidal range. And this zone between high tide and low tide is called as littoral zone. Friends. Please see littoral zone. See the word littoral. L I T T O R A L. High tide and low tide. This zone is called as littoral zone. Very important, friends. So many students they get confused with the word tide and they think that okay, whenever there is high tide, the water volume is going to increase. No. Whatever volume of water we have on the earth's surface is constant. Only the level of the water will fluctuate. So you have to remember tides are rise and fall of water level that is observed in the water bodies. So why do we have tides? Correct. So let's see that. So we know that sun is our mother star, parent star. It is a source of light and heat energy. Sun's gravity is constantly acting on earth and all celestial objects within the solar system. So whenever the sun gravitational pull acts on earth, what happens? So water level will rise. We know that moon is our natural satellite. So moon's gravity is also acting on earth. Because moon is closer to earth, most of the gravitational pull caused by moon can cause lot of tides on earth. So whenever the sun and moon's gravity act on earth, there is sudden rise in the water level that causes high tide. In order to balance this pull by sun and moon, earth will exert equal amount of centrifugal force in opposite direction. That causes another tide here friends. Please notice another tide here, another tide here. So two places will be experiencing high tide. When the water increases in these two places, obviously the other two places on the earth's surface, the water level will come down. So those two places here will experience low tide here and here. Please remember friends. So whenever two places experience high tide, the other two places, the water level will come down naturally. So that is called as low tide. So at any point of time, there will be two high tides and two low tides. So please remember the gravitational pull of sun and moon are responsible for tides on earth. Plus, the centrifugal force of earth is also responsible. So, let's say somebody is pulling you in one direction and you don't want to pull. You will exert equal amount of force in opposite direction. That is centrifugal force, friends. Please remember this. So, what are the three reasons for the formation of tides? Gravitational pull of sun, gravitational pull of moon and centrifugal force of earth. So please go back and see now. So this rise and fall of water level is called as tides. The vertical extent is tidal range. Horizontal extent is littoral zone. This is littoral zone. Okay. It's a very interesting phenomenon, friends. Whenever the tides occur, they clean up our coast. So they bring new nutrients to the coastline. And it helps fishermen to carry out fishing in the tidal estuaries, friends. So whenever there is high tide, the water enters the narrow inlets, creeks, gulfs and estuaries bringing in nutrients and fish. It helps our local fishermen. And also the tidal activity also helps us in carrying out fishing and navigation in the coastal areas. So please remember friends, we have a lot of advantage from tides. So sun and moon's gravitational pull and centrifugal force of earth. So please remember, sun is the largest celestial object in the solar system. As I said, Sun's gravity is more on the earth. So whatever tide we have is because of the sun. So that is called a solar tide. Whatever tide that occurs on the earth is called as solar tide. If the moon is responsible for formation of tide, it is called as lunar tide, friends. So solar tide, lunar tide. If sun is responsible for causing tides on earth, it is called as solar tide. If moon is responsible for tides, it is called as lunar tide. So please remember, friends, moon is our natural satellite. It is always around us and it is close to earth. As a result, most of the tides are caused by moon. Most of the tides on earth are caused by moon. So lunar tides. Now, please notice this friends. We can see there is sudden fluctuation in the water level. So whenever the water level comes here, there is high tide. This mark, you can see the black line, high tide. Please see the water level is here. Whenever the water level goes down here, you can see the water now here. It is low tide. So this tidal range is 26 to 28 feet. Please notice this fluctuation. So nearly 26 to 28 feet is the tidal range here friends. 
and this zone is called as littoral zone this zone is littoral zone please remember friends high tide low tide now most of the tides are caused by moon so i am going to explain more about our moon so this is brief introduction about moon we all know that moon is our natural satellite it is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system moon is the second brightest object in the sky after sun we all know that moon's gravity is very low and it is 1/6th of earth gravity and moon lacks atmosphere because it has very very low gravity the latin name is luna and the greek name is selene please remember friends latin name is luna the other reason we call it as lunar and greek name is selene please remember moon's period of rotation spin and period of revolution around earth is same so moon takes nearly 27.3 days to complete one spin as well as one orbit around earth friends so this is some of the small introduction that already we have discussed a topic called moon in our youtube class this is just a introduction to our tides because moon is the largest celestial object that is close to earth as a result most of the tides caused on earth are because of moon so please zoom up friends moonlight whenever you see moonlight it is just reflecting the sunlight the sunlight falls on moon and it get reflected towards observer like us on the earth surface so please remember friends the moon is rotating and revolving around earth in a elliptical counter clockwise orbit and this orbit is called as lunar orbit you can see the lunar orbit around earth since it is having elliptical orbit sometimes the moon is very close sometimes it is very far when it is close it is called as perigee when it is far it is called as apogee please remember friends perigee apogee when it is very far apogee please re- see this word when it is very near perigee so distance when it is near is 362600 km distance when it is far is 445400 km friends the word apo means far and ge means earth because moon is having geocentric orbit please remember geocentric orbit please see word peri means near ge means earth near earth the meaning is near earth here okay so perigee apogee please remember friends so whenever the moon is very far the gravitational pull between moon and earth will be less the gravitational pull of moon on earth is less as a result apogean tides apogean tide whenever the moon is closer we have perigean tides perigean tides so please remember friends we have two types of tide apogean perigean so those are lunar tides please remember friends lunar tides there are two types apogean perigean let's see the formation of moon we all know that earth was formed somewhere around 4.5 billion years ago so same time there was a large asteroid impact by the name theia this theia impact led to large number of changes on the earth surface so because of the impact there was a giant explosion on the earth surface it was called as giant splash because of this explosion please notice this there are large number of rocks dust particles rocks dust particles in all direction were thrown out all these rocks dust particles started to encircle the earth they started to encircle the earth and slowly all of them started to evolve revolve around earth slowly combining due to mutual gravity slowly all these rock fragment dust particles started to coalesce due to mutual gravity to form our celestial object that we today call it as moon please remember friends moon is our celestial object formed due to an asteroid impact theia so all of you know that moon is our natural satellite it is formed from the matter of earth as well as theia so this impact took place somewhere around 4.5 billion years ago just after the formation of earth and this asteroid theia this asteroid theia was as big as mars the asteroid was big as mars mars sized mars sized asteroid theia collided with earth that led to the formation of moon today so that is the reason friends we have moon please notice this small documentary see the impact theia because of that all the dust rock fragments were encircling the earth slowly they all combined to form moon please notice all the rock fragments dust particles coalesced combined due to gravity and all of them encircled the earth 
forming in orbit that is today called as moon so all of you know the formation now please notice this friends so sun moon earth we all know that moon rotates and revolves around earth so what happens is the sunlight falls on moon and it gets reflected towards earth then we see moon if the light is reflected towards earth then we can see the moon what if the sunlight is falling on this part of the moon and getting reflected back here what happens here this part is dark side this part is bright side here please notice the sunlight is falling on this side and getting reflected back as a result light is not coming towards earth that day so we can't see anything so that day we have new moon new moon please see here new moon or amavasya on this day the light falling on the moon will be reflected back towards sun or towards space as a result we will not receive any light from the moon so we have we can't see moon that night so that is called as new moon okay so please know my friends after few days please notice this the moon comes here moon comes here please notice now we are able to see this portion of the moon because sunlight is illuminating this part from the earth we will be able to see this part so this is called as waxing crescent you can see here waxing crescent waxing crescent this is the portion we are seeing here this portion this portion this part is dark we can't notice this see after some time again please notice this when the moon comes here you can see this part is illuminated from the earth we can see this part so this is called as the quarter part of the moon is visible first quarter friends this is called as first quarter because the quarter one fourth of the moon is visible please see this one fourth is visible here one fourth first quarter please notice this when the moon comes here you can see the sunlight is falling on this part and getting reflected towards earth please notice from the earth you look at the moon from here till here you can see from here till here this is more than first quarter so gibbous waxing gibbous waxing gibbous please see waxing gibbous after few days you can see moon is here exactly opposite to the sun the sunlight is falling here and it's getting reflected towards earth we can see this half correct so actually it is half we are noticing now many people call it as full moon by convention we are using full moon we see so this is how it is illuminated only one side of the moon is illuminated the other side is not illuminated so we see only one side of the moon please see here friends this full moon please notice from new moon to full moon we can see new moon and full moon sun moon are, are in the same line correct yes so new moon and full moon the gravitational pull will be high on the earth so please continue now notice this here what happens the moon comes here so sunlight is falling on this part from here till here we can get to see the moon so this is waning now it is decreasing so waning gibbous from here to here waning gibbous from here to here friends waning gibbous see it's decreasing now so after some time please notice this it is coming here now again the sunlight is illuminating this part we can see only half of the moon here or quarter part of the moon so this is called a third quarter friends earlier we saw first quarter now we are seeing the third quarter here from the earth third quarter please see this third quarter please notice this now after some time you can see the moon comes here so see sunlight is falling here it is getting reflected back only small portion we can see from the earth this part waning crescent this is called as waning crescent waning crescent again after some time please notice the moon will come back to its original position the sun is sunlight is falling here it is getting reflected back as a result we can't see anything from the earth so this is called as new moon again see i am going to play it again now please all of you notice waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous full moon waning gibbous third quarter waning crescent new moon so please see new moon and full moon in new moon and full moon please notice new moon now and full moon now one second please wait full moon sun moon earth will be in a same line correct as a result on that day sun and moon's gravity will together act on earth causing highest tides so it's called spring tide new moon and full moon please remember friends new moon and full moon we get spring tide highest tide because sun and moon's together gravity will act on earth there will be combined action as a result the tidal level will be higher 
highest tides can be noticed. Tidal range is also highest. Okay, please don't notice. Please notice now first quarter. Yes, this one. Please notice this first quarter. What happens here? The sun's gravity and moon's gravity will partially cancel out because they are in right angle now. Since sun, moon, earth are in right angle, 90 degree, you can see 90 degree. The sun gravity will partially cancel with moon's gravity, giving us neap tides. Neap tides. Neap tides are the lowest tides with lowest tidal range, friends. Neap tides occurs on first quarter and third quarter. Please notice this. Third quarter, yes. On the first and third quarter, we get neap tides. Neap tides. So, all of you know, there are two types of tides based on the faces of the moon. Please see all of you. This is sun, moon, earth in a straight line. So, what do we get? Yes, sun's gravity will cause solar tide. Moon's gravity will act on earth causing lunar tide. Together, it will be having spring tide. Please notice this, friends. Spring tide. Now, please notice. Sun, moon, earth are in right angle now. So, what happens now? Sun's gravity will cause solar tide. Moon's gravity will cause lunar tide. So, what happens? They will partially cancel out now. Sun's gravity, moon's gravity will partially cancel out, giving us neap tide. Yes, neap tide. Very good, friends. Now, please see full moon. Now, you are going to get full moon. See, sun's gravity, moon's gravity. Together, will act on earth, giving us spring tide again. We are going to get spring tide. You can see here, spring tide. Please notice this. After some time, the moon is going to come to third quarter here. See, sun, earth, moon. This is going to give us neap tide again. Please see, sun's gravity and moon's gravity will partly cancel out, giving us neap tide. So, based on the faces of the moon, friends, we have two types of tides. Spring tide, neap tide. When do we get spring tide? New moon and full moon. When do we get neap tides? First quarter and third quarter. So please remember friends, we have covered tides. So during spring tide, we can see the water level will reach here. Please notice this. Water level is going to come here. Highest to tide here. Highest to high tide. And lowest to low tide here. So the tidal range will be highest during spring tide. During spring tide, the water level is, please notice this point, higher part here and lower part here. This is intertidal zone, littoral zone. Please remember, friends, highest to high, lowest to low. So, tidal range will be high is when spring tide. What happens to neap tide? Please neap. see here. The neap tide, the water will be, will be here. Low high and high low here. This mark. So, tidal range is the shortest here. Please remember, friends, tidal will be shortest. Please remember, for high tide and low tide, there will be two marks. Highest high tide, lowest high tide. Please mark this now. Please mark this. This is high tide, friends. High tide will have HHT, HHT, LHT. High high tide, low high tide. Here. These two marks will be there. Again, low tide will be having high low tide, low low tide. Please remember this. So, for everything, there will be two marks. Here. In the high tide, will be, we will be having two parts. In low tide, we will be having two parts here. So, when do we get spring tide, new moon and full moon, then the tidal range will be highest. When do we get neap tide, correct, on first quarter and third quarter moon, so water level will be here and here. Okay, please see. So, as a result, we will be getting lowest to tidal range. Now, tidal range is very low. So, when you calculate mean sea level, friends, you should know, we take the average of these two points in the low tide area, we go to the low tide points and that low tide we get high low tide and low low tide. The average point of this is mean sea level. All of you know mean sea level. Have you ever thought how will you measure this? Yes, I am explaining that now. Based on the low tide mark, the average point between high low tide and low low tide is the mean sea level. So the altitude and depth is calculated with the help of this mean sea level friends. So this is the datum or reference for calculating the mean sea level. So please remember friends, this is very important. It is not given anywhere. I want you to understand in the low tide mark area, we have to calculate this. 
this topic is very important if you know where is the mean sea level how to calculate it will be asked in the examination so please remember this this zone between the high tide low tide is called as littoral zone littoral zone or intertidal zone intertidal zone friends please remember littoral zone now please here so this is what we have to understand now we all know that earth rotates once in 24 hours earth rotates once in 24 hours and please notice the moon moon is also rotating around moon is also rotating around earth correct so all of you please notice this please notice this is earth and this is moon moon earth okay earth rotates once in 24 hours earth completes its rotation once in 24 hours whereas moon is slowly rotating and revolving around earth moon takes 27.3 days to complete one rotation and revolution around earth so moon has same period of rotation and revolution around earth friends so moon takes 27.3 days to complete one orbit around earth okay please remember so in earth please notice i have taken a point x this point x is facing the moon now moon now for this point to come under the moon please see earth rotates for 24 hours please wait what happens now please notice see earth is taking now time slowly it is rotating 12 hours please notice this yes please notice the point x has come back to its original place now the earth has completed one rotation in 24 hours now please notice now moon is not here now moon has slowly moved forward now moon is slowly moving forward in its path in its orbit it is moving forward here in its elliptical path moon is here now correct but x is here in this place so earth has completed one rotation now in 24 hours but moon is not in that place for x to come back on exactly to this line this line to come back on exactly under the moon it has to travel for another 50 minutes the moon is already forward here the earth has to travel for another 50 minutes to come under the moon please notice this yes to come under the moon again this line has to travel another 50 minutes because moon is also orbiting earth slowly so moon has moved slowly here as a result for the line to come under the moon it has to travel 50 minutes extra for the same point to come under the moon it takes 24 hours 52 minutes 50 minutes friends 24 hours 50 minutes please watch again i want all of you to watch we are starting from this point x both of them were here so see earth is rotating whereas moon is also slowly moving around you see this earth has completed 24 hours now in one rotation it has completed 24 hours but moon has moved further for this line to come under the moon again earth has to travel for another 50 minutes then we get the same line here again for the same point to come under the moon we need 24 hours 50 minutes this is called as lunar day friends so what is lunar day lunar day is 24 hours 50 minutes so please remember this is a very important question you are going to get in the all the examination because many books they have not mentioned this and upsc will be asking many questions related to moon chandrayana 1 chandrayana 2 chandrayana 3 we are planning all of you please pay attention with the help of documentary i'm explaining this again so starting from here see the line here please notice this in 24 hours earth is completing but when earth comes back to the same place here the moon has moved forward in its axis in, in its orbit as a result earth has to travel for another 50 minutes to come under the moon then we get the complete the lunar day lunar day is 24 hours 50 minutes friends please remember so whenever any point is facing the moon we get high tide please see the point facing the moon is high tide here see this point is facing high tide so let's take it as a line here so please see this high tide mark here high tide mark all of you can see here so this line blue line i'm showing you now since the blue line is under the moon we are experiencing high tide please notice this now now after some time see here see here this line is here what about this line what is this going to face now low tide because this low line is here okay so line is here so this line is going to experience low tide again after some time it will be in the opposite side 
we are going to experience high tide again centrifugal force low tide again here and back to this place high tide so friends please remember very important documentary i'm showing you here so whenever this line is facing the moon we'll get high tide after that please notice low tide now because it is a right angle right angle to moon please see it is opposite to moon now why it is opposite now yes moon's opposite side centrifugal force will give the high tide here centrifugal force high tide please remember centrifugal force of the earth again see low tide here low tide because they are in right angle again after some time please see yes so one lunar day is 24 hours 50 minutes friends okay so please remember one lunar day is 24 hours 50 minutes okay so this calculation is very much required from one high tide to low tide take 6 hours 12.5 minutes please see i'll show you this calculation now here from the high tide to low tide please see from high tide to low tide it took 6 hours 12.5 minutes another 6 hours 12.5 minutes will get another high tide please notice that carefully another 6 hours 12.5 minutes see 6 hours 12.5 minutes that is 12 hours 25 minutes you'll get another high tide from this time to this time is 12 hours 25. Now please notice. Yes, another low tide here. Again, for next high tide to occur, it should be 24 hours 50 minutes here. So hope all of you got this. 24 hours 50 minutes is the lunar day. So depending upon the course, friends, because there is unequal distribution of land and water. All of us know that. So land and water is not uniformly distributed. We have more land in northern hemisphere, less land in southern hemisphere. And also we have variation of the coastline like gull, creeks, estuaries, bay, correct, various uh, lagoons in the coastal areas. As a result, there is variation of the coastline. Because of the variation of coastline, some places receive one high, one low tide of same height. They are called as semi-diagonal. Please see this, friends, the center part here, this one. Some places in one lunar day, please see, in one lunar day is 24 hours, 50 minutes. In one lunar day, 24 hours, 50 minutes, 50 minutes, they'll experience two high, two high tides and two low tides, two low tides. So that is called a semi-diurnal, semi-diurnal friends. Please remember, semi-diurnal. Some places, they experience one high and one low. They are called as diurnal means daily daily one high one low some places will experience two high two low of different height see two high two low of different height so they're called as mixed tides mixed tides so please remember friends because of the variation of the coastline and unequal distribution of land and water some places will receive two high two low of same height semi diurnal some places will receive one high one low diurnal and some places will receive two unequal high, two unequal low in one solar day and lunar day. Please here. This is the lunar day. In 24 hours, 50 minutes, there will be variation in the tides. So we have three types of tides based on the variation of the coastline friends. Please see. So this is the map of the world where, where we can experience different tides. Please notice west coast and east coast of India. Please see west coast of India. Here. Please notice this west coast of India, Arabian Sea here. So the Arabian Sea coast here in Africa, Arabian Peninsula and India, it is going to experience mixed tides. It is unequal high and low. Two unequal high and low tides. Whereas the Bay of Bengal side will experience semi-diurnal tides. Semi-diurnal. Two high, two low. Friends. Here. Okay, please remember. So Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal, all of you have seen. So this is the question they can ask in the prelims. Don't forget. Arabian Sea experiences what type of tide? Mixed tide. Whereas Bay of Bengal experiences what type of tide? semi diurnal Okay. So notice that most of the Atlantic coast, most of the Atlantic coast experiences semi diurnal tides. Yes. See Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico experiences diurnal tide. Diurnal tide. One high, one low. Okay. South China Sea here. Southern part of South China Sea experience diurnal tide here. 
So please remember friends, this map is very important. So there will be one question on Indian part and these water bodies. And these water bodies. Now, please notice this. During high tide, the water is here. Here, the low tide water is here. Somewhere here. Please see. This is called as high tide, low tide. You can see whenever the water is in the high tide is flood tide. Everything is under the water. Whenever the water goes back, please notice this. See the water is here. This is called as low tide. Low tide. See this is exposed. This entire tidal flat is exposed. You can see some kids playing here. Correct? So some beaches which have very broad shell, shallow shell, will have very high tidal range. Littoral zones are exposed. This zone between high tide and low tide is littoral zone. See, this is the low tide point. This is the high tide point. So this zone is called as littoral zone. Correct? So this entire littoral zone is exposed. Now, please see. You can see some people walking here, kids playing here. Correct? You can see that here. So this is littoral zone that is exposed. Wherever we have very broad and shallow shelf, we can experience very large littoral areas. So there is a place in India called Chandipur. Chandipur on sea in Orissa coast. That beach is called as hide and seek beach. So this is a picture from hide and seek beach of Chandipur French. Up to 5 kilometers. Up to 5 kilometers the water level will retreat during low tide. So we can walk up to 5-6 kilometers. Okay. So please remember friend, this is the Chandipur beach in Orissa. Where we can experience very large littoral area being exposed. So, where all do we experience very high tidal range? What is tidal range? The vertical extent is called as tidal range. See here, in Gulf of Kambad, Gujarat, Gulf of Kutch, Sundarbans, these three places we experience very high tidal range. Please notice, the Gulf of Kambad tidal range is 11 meter, Gulf of Kutch 8 meters and Sundarban 5 meter. 5 meter. So, here Gulf of Kambad, here 11 meter. Here 8 meter and here it is 5 meter. So in these places we can ex we can experience very high tidal range. The fluctuation is very high. So because there are so many tidal creeks, gulfs and all. The water when it comes from the ocean, that is Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal, get funneled into those Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Kambath area, causing very high tide. So tidal range is very high. So these are the places in India where we have very high tidal range. Trend. You might have heard of a place called Bay of Fundy in Canada. Bay of Fundy in Canada has the highest tidal range because the Bay of Fundy coast is such a way the water from the Atlantic Ocean gets funneled into the Bay of Fundy causing the highest tides in Bay of Fundy, Canada. Please remember. Now, so one major important about uh, aspect of tidal range is we can harness tidal energy. Wherever the tidal range is very high, we can produce power. Whenever there is high tide, see, high tide, the water enters the barrage. This kind of barrage is constructed. When the water enters here, it is collecting here. Please notice this here. It is collecting here. So when it enters the turbine here, you can see the turbine here. Turbine rotates. It is connected to the generator here. Generator will produce the power. Okay. During high tide, the water is coming in. During low tide, water is going out. Please see. During low tide, the water level is falling here. As a result, all the water is going out. That is stored here. Is it? It is going out. Again, the turbines will rotate. The generator will produce the power. So, this is how tidal energy can be harnessed, friends. So, tides can be used to produce energy. And this is one of the renewable source of power, clean source of power. But only damages, there will be some damage to the marine flora and fauna. Okay. So, please remember, friends. Now, so all of you might have heard of a project called Gulf of Kambat Development Project called Kalpasar Project. This Kalpasar Dam is being built in Gulf of Kambat area. It is to power it with multiple benefits. So the name Kalpasar. It comes from the word Kalpataru which means multiple benefits. Kalpasar means multiple benefits. This is basically a freshwater storage dam friends. It is going to store all the fresh water from the surrounding rivers. For example, you might have heard of Sabarmati. Very popular river Sabarmati here. Please notice. It flows through Ahmadabad, Gandhinagar. Remember Sabarmati Ashram? Yes. Then Mahe River, Dadar, Bogava, Bogava River, Uttavalli River and also Narmada here. The Narmada River flows into Gulf of Kambat near the edge. Here what they are doing, if all the water is flowing into it, it will be wasted. So they are trying to divert into 
this project here through diversion canal. Narmada diversion canal is built built from Badbud barrage. From Badbud barrage, the canal is being built towards the project area here. So all the Narmada water is diverted here. So all the fresh water is stored. So nearly 2000 square kilometer water is stored here. So this is the very large dam friends. The dam length is 30 kilometers. This is going to be the largest dam on earth after the completion. The project has already started in 2016. It will be completing somewhere in 2021 next year. The project was started in 2016, completed in 2021. Largest dam is being built in Gulf of Kambad. It is a freshwater dam. And uh, on this dam, they'll be making roads here, road to connect this side, Surat side of Gujarat towards Bhavanagar side. This side is called as like, you might have heard of Baruch. Baruch is a major town here. You can see Baruch, Surat, Ankaleshwar is connected towards Bhavanagar here in Saurashtra. Earlier, we had to travel like this, like this. Now we can come through this dam. Road. 10 lane roads are being planned here. Large reservoir of water can be stored here, which can be used to solve the water crisis in Gujarat and Maharashtra and connectivity can be improved. We can produce tidal energy as well. So the government is planning to produce some 5,880 megawatt of power, tidal power from here in this region because of very high tidal range. Okay, so please remember friends, the multiple benefits. So it's called as Kalpasar. I'm going to show you the Gujarat map here. The project map already, you know, this 30 kilometer dam here is going to store water, improve the connectivity between Saurashtra and uh, South Gujarat. And also, please notice, the water that is stored will be diverted into the canal here, Kalpasar Dam Canal. From this canal, the water is taken towards the Saurashtra area here. You can see this. This is the Gulf of Kambad development project. So across the canal will end here in Gulf of Kutch. It will end in Gulf of Kutch. The water will be drained into Gulf of Kutch here. Okay. The water from Kalpasar is taken down across the Saurashtra coast and taken up to the Gulf of Kutch here. So please remember friends, this project is one of the largest projects on earth. And this dam is going to be the largest dam on earth. So Kalpasar project. Friends, I have covered all aspects of tides and also I have given you the application. I told you tides are very important phenomena. They clean up our coast. They bring new nutrients. They bring fish to the tidal estuaries. They help fishermen in navigation in the coastal areas. And also they help us in producing power. Thank you friends. Please don't forget to attend my class on Sunday. Geography and Environment Current Affairs for 2020-20 Examination Part 3 Series. Already I have covered Part 1 and Part 2 in my previous class and part 3 will be coming this Sunday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. friends. So please don't forget to attend this class. Please like, subscribe and share my video. Friends, I am Mohan Krishnamurti from Bangalore. I am an Associate Professor of Geography and I have authored many books. Please like, subscribe and share my video and use my code to get 10% discount on an academy. Thank you friends. Thank you all for attending today's class.